Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. Well, there's Bugsy Malone, thief, hat thief in chief. She hasn't told me where the uh, hat is. You might think I'm wearing it. This is my third kit, or the away kit. I've got two or three of these hats. They all look the same, but they're not. And my home kit has gone missing. And if she's taken it outside, then because of the rain, I think it's done. I think it's gone forever. Anyway, we move. How are you guys? I hope you're having a better start to the day than I am. Please smash the like button for me on the video like you always do. It really helps the channel, but only if you enjoy the content. Only if you enjoy the content. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the march to 20K. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And it's Sunday, so news is thin on the ground, like my hairline, but... We've got a story to tell you, but before we get into that, make sure you join us tonight, seven o'clock on the Spurs Talk Show. Tottenham Takes is back. Myself, Henry Wright, Deji, and Dave from the Irish Hotspur are getting together tonight. It is a show without George. George can't make it tonight, but it's going to be fun talking about the Palace game, the Chelsea game, how we move forward, and maybe some transfer stories that are or have been lurking. And that is the story of today. It's Santiago Jimenez, a player that I've mentioned, I don't know, 10 times on this channel. I love him. I think he's 22 years of, old, years of age. Mexican international, plays for Feyenoord. Absolutely banging in the goals this season at all levels. European competitions and the Dutch League, the Eredivisie and internationals, I believe. And uh, for me... An all-round, really exciting type of player. I think he reminds me very much of Harry Kane. Like, he can dribble when he comes deep, picks the ball up. He can dribble, but not with fast feet, not with fast legs. But he just has that same kind of capacity as Harry Kane does, where they know how to kind of shape their body weight to kind of ride challenges and to kind of move through crowded areas and come out with the ball. He's got a wonderful range of passing on him. He's good in the air. He's tall, he's strong and he can hit the ball with both feet from distance and close range. He's been doing it for quite a while now, and consequently, all of the big teams are looking at him. Now, I've said this story before. By the way, I think the last thing I should say about him, I believe he is, in terms of goals per minute, this season, I think he is second in the entire European League set up, behind only Serhu Garassi, um, who we've spoken about as well, Tottenham are linked with him, who has a £15 million release clause. But he's a player that's 27, and it's his kind of second breakout season to a degree. He's been okay where he's gone elsewhere. He's done, he's had a few 10-goal seasons, but it's, this is really stepping up for him. You know, I've spoken about him, I find him a little bit clumsy. But anyway, Santiago Jimenez is my guy, my favourite of all of them. And the story last week was that the agent of Santiago Jimenez came out and said, there's a number of clubs that are interested. Inter Milan, Juve, Real Madrid, Tottenham, a couple of English clubs, a couple of other European clubs, Napoli, Lazio, etc. But that Tottenham and Real Madrid are closest to the player and are kind of head of the queue, which was interesting. But what's come out since is that actually... First and foremost, Romano's come out with some comments about this. But as has there been a clarification, he's not actually the agent of Santiago Jimenez. The father is the agent, according to Romano. He's handling the transfer, the, the business, and he has subsequently hired this agent as a consultant because they think that the transfer is imminent, i.e. January or the summer, but possibly January. And they want to get, you know, more advice, more advanced, more experienced heads and minds surrounding the father to help with the process. Now, the agent or the consultant has said in that initial conversation that he believes that Juve or an Italian club would be the best fit for Jimenez, but that Tottenham and Real Madrid are the top of the list right now. But I think the agent, I don't know, but I'm guessing by looking at his name, and I'll put it on the screen, I haven't got it in front of me now, I can't remember it, but I'll add it to the video. It, I think he's Italian, or at least he sounds Italian. So maybe there's that rationale as to why he's trying to push it into the relationships that he knows so he can more easily 
get some higher money and maybe get paid on the side, whatever. But according to Romano, Tottenham are the club that's most interesting and most interested. And that he believes, he said this on Friday, I think, on his podcast, that 39 million pound or 44 million euros could be enough. Now, I don't personally believe that he will go for as low as that. I think there'll be a bidding war for him. We've explained why there's just, when you have a player who has all of the attributes to fit most systems, smart, intelligent, he's not slow, he can head, hit the ball with both feet, he can come deep and, and whip the ball, greater build-up play. He can fit a, th- a back three model, he can fit a, a, a flat four, he can fit a 4-4-2 diamond, he can, he can fit the 4-3-3, he can fit basically any system. And obviously with the levels that he's doing it and the consistency that he's doing it at, that kind of idea that, oh, he's done it in the Farmers League, the Eredivisie, can he do it at the next level? Well, he's been doing it at Champions League level two and Europa League and things. So I think that answer has, that question has been answered that he can. And I think that when you've got so few players like that, the supply is so low, that art- that always artificially increases the value. Plus the supply, or sorry, yeah, the supply is so low, but the demand for players like him from the top clubs around Europe is so high that I think that he'll go for more like 70 million. Now you have to ask yourself, are Tottenham going to break their transfer record for Santiago Jimenez? Well, we broke our transfer record last time for a relatively young, relatively unknown player from a kind of minor league and it hasn't worked out. Is Daniel Levy going to kind of be that, be that kind of model of once bitten, twice shy? Or is he going to go again? Is it a player that all of the stats are supporting the purchase of? Is it a player that Poster Coglu admires? What about Langer? and Paratici and Scott Munn. Lots of conversations, but according to Romano, Tottenham have been watching him the longest because when the Tottenham were preparing for a possible life after Conte, long before he departed, they had identified as one of the targets, Arnie Slot. And so by looking at him and spending a lot of time watching what he was doing, when they were drawing up their managerial shortlist, they also stumbled across, obviously, Santiago Jimenez, and so have been watching him for a lot longer than most teams. And I think also, from what I've seen, Tottenham have had more scouts watching him more regularly than anyone else. So it's an interesting story, and it's a player that I really, really do like. What I would say, though, is that there's a lot of other teams out there that are looking for strikers, Chelsea being one of them. If you saw the game yesterday, Chelsea, once again, creating lots of opportunity, loads of possession, but no final product. And the value proposition to sell Santiago Jimenez to Chelsea is probably quite easy. For me, guys, with Chelsea, if you look at their form, they've been playing pretty good football. They just haven't got anything up top. They really don't have any ability right now to trust in their forwards. Nico Jackson has just been a terrible disappointment. A player, to be fair to him, you know, I've got to hold my hands up. I thought, watching him for Villarreal last season, I thought he'd suit the Premier League, but I'm just not sure he fits what they're looking for. I think he might be better repositioned as an inside forward, if I'm entirely honest. But in any event, um, they need someone. And when you can sell the story of an owner that is willing to throw good money after bad at fixing issues, a manager that is likeable and that is... I know, I think it's fair to say of high quality. Um, a really young squad that's got bundles of talent and where your impact, you being the final piece of the jigsaw, guarantees you minutes, will provide you with countless opportunities to score and where your that impact that you're creating could easily be the difference between that club finishing 10th and finishing in the Champions League spots, which is what the owner craves and needs to justify the investment, then I feel like there's quite a compelling value proposition, quite a compelling sales pitch from Chelsea for whoever they want to go after that fits the bill. And as I say, despite 
Bowley spending over a billion because of clever accounting practices and offloading a lot of the young talent, then I don't even think they have to worry too much about FFP. So it wouldn't surprise me if they were to pay more than the next guy. You're also competing with Real Madrid. And let's be honest, if Real Madrid want to come in for Santiago Jimenez, it doesn't really matter what value proposition you're presenting, you're going to go to Real Madrid. Or most people, most players, 99% of the players would go to Real Madrid if the money's right from the, for the club. And that's what it comes down to, I think. You know, Santiago Jimenez and his father seemingly are willing to make things happen sooner rather than later. But it's whether or not the club are willing to disrupt their season, how much they will want. According to Romano, it could be 44 million euros. But I don't know. I think it'll go a lot higher than that. And also there's other teams as well that are looking for players. Maybe the reason why Chelsea aren't at the top of the list right now is because they fancy a straight battle with Arsenal for Ivan Tony, Ivan Tony. You know, he is Prem proven. He is you know what you're gonna get with Ivan Tony, and that is goals. He's a brilliant player. And you know, his gambling problems never hindered his performances on the pitch. And so there's no reason to suspect that his transfer into a bigger team than Brentford would be somewhat stifled by any of the things that are going on off the pitch. Maybe they would, we'll find out. But he's also a London boy already. He wouldn't even need to move home if he was playing for Brentford. Chelsea's just down the road. Um, but obviously Arsenal were in there as well. But Chelsea have got form in you know, taking players under the noses of Arsenal. And they probably think they can do it again. They've done it before. They did it with Mudrik. They could probably do it again. So it'd be interesting. There's only, like I say, a handful of really talented players that are out there. Players like Sir Hugarassi standing up and letting everyone know, hey, don't forget about me. I'm the guy who's got the most goals per minute, the most goals outright in Europe at the moment. I'm looking for a big move. And you know what? It could just be perfect timing for him because there's so many teams that are looking for a nine and so few available options. And Tottenham, for me, have to consider the impact of going after a Santiago Jimenez when it comes to what it's going to do to the team. What do you do with Hyung Min's son if you buy Santiago Jimenez for what would be club record money? Do you just let them fight it out and compete? And if so, you're not going to drop your captain and you don't deserve to drop your captain. He's been sensational this year. He's the second top goal scorer in the Premier League. Do you push Sonny back out to the left where we know that he's no longer at his best? I'm not sure. Now, you can make the argument that, look, within next, the next six months, by next season, we will hopefully be playing up near 60 games if we have a good European campaign. And so you're going to need rotation. And if Tottenham want to be the club that are going on to compete for regular you know, titles or whatever in the future, if you want to actually dare to dream about that stuff, then you're going to need to have an improvement in the squad depth that we already have. And so I'd be all about getting Santiago Jimenez in, but I think the value proposition, the sales pitch is a little bit tougher when you're competing now, just like it always was before when you had Harry Kane. How do you convince a top talent to come in behind Harry Kane when you know he's not going to play? Is the same argument now emerging for Sonny? Because he is the second, as I say, the second top goal scorer in the Premier League. He's the, the captain of Tottenham. He also provides a lot of additional commercial re revenues. And if you move him back out to the left, then to shoehorn other players in, what does that do to the chemistry, to the cohesion, to the team unit? It's all interesting conversations. And I think that when you land on it, it's probably an easier conversation for Santiago Jimenez to go somewhere else other than Tottenham. But if Tottenham really want him, and if, if Posta Coglu has identified him, and Scott Mann and Paratici and, and Johan Langer are all saying, this is our guy, not just for now, but for the future. Remember, Sonny is 32 soon. He's not going to be around forever. Even though